This is Kafanchan, a small town in Jama local government area of Kaduna State. This once a bubbling town is now a ghost of itself because of the crisis which started in 2011 and has been on and off, but in recent times started on Monday. What causes a man who has lived with a neighbor for decades to rise up and strike him? The crux of the matter, the real thing is that there has been pathological hatred, mutual suspicion uh, between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. And this is caused by elitism, especially the elites that we have around this area. We have retired civil servants, retired uh, uh, security officers. During their tenure, they couldn't do anything for their people. So when they come back home, you know, the people will start questioning them. While you were there, what did you do for me? Virtually, they did nothing. So when they come back home, the only way they can successfully live is to ignite the problem of tribal partisanship and religious differences. I, I don't it? think there is a tiny issue between the tribes. Rather, it is a tiny issue between the natives and the Hausa Fulani communities in the, in the town. It's a misunderstanding between the tribes on one side and the Hausa Fulani on the other side. The origin of the Kafanchan crisis has many sides to the story. What is accepted among all parties is that the crisis started in 2011. Origin is from that 2011 elections when uh, accordingly and it, people collaborated it to say that there was an extraordinary call of prayers in the town. And after that one, by, by Muslims. After the call of prayer, then uh, there was firing, gun and everything. It continued until around 5.30 or thereabouts when the army came in. And that was how the, that was how the problem started in 2011. Since the crisis in 2011, perhaps this is the first time another major crisis has erupted in the town. And as usual, there are many versions as to how it all started. I think it's good for, for, me, to, for me to just, you know, tell you what happened before uh, what actually took place on Monday. And... Um, on Sunday, youth can leader came and met me around this very time, around 4.30, that tomorrow they are going to stage a peaceful demonstration. So I asked him what for. He said, hey, because of this rampant killing and uh, so on and so forth. I said, okay, but you know Kafanchan is a flashpoint area. And at this material time, it's not conducive for any protest. Besides, it will be very, very easy for you to gather people, but to control them is another thing. So why can't you suspend this uh, protest till maybe after New Year? He said that, um, well, the idea is not from here. It's from above. And there is nothing he could do. I said, okay. Did he but, specify the above? Uh, he didn't specify. I said, okay, but this is my candid advice for you. Because we have been meeting at peace and uh, 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 dialogue with him, you know, He's a very nice young man. So I advise him, I said, look, this is our candid advice. Besides, in Kafanchan here, we are living peacefully. You can see people are going about doing their normal business. There is nothing. Now, if you dare attempt to bring people out, should something happen, you are going to disrupt Esmas and New Year celebration. He said, yes, I agree with you. So he left. Then in the night, I call him. How about the protest? 
He said, um, right now we are at the police station. The DPO and the AC they, uh, did, uh, did not give us permission. So I said, good, I'm fine. So in the morning, I was about to go to escort one of my friends. He's going back to Abuja. Then I saw people coming along Angwarimi, that is a suburb of Kafanchan, you know, coming to the town. I said, ah, these people, they told us that there is not going to be any protest. But why? What is happening now? So I quickly came back to the town. In fact, I was even confused. I don't know who to meet at that time, you know. So I just met some few people and told them that, look, um, there is going to be a protest. And I'm afraid. The way the people are coming, you know, um, and Kapanchan, knowing how Kapanchan is, we just have to pray. So they came and they passed. They went to the local government. Nothing happened. At the local government, somebody called me. That you see the protest, I told him. They are there right now. The local government chairman is not around. And they started vandalizing uh, local government secretariat. I said, hey, you see, that is what we are afraid of. So when they left local government, before they enter Kafanchan, there is a filling station. They call it Kutna's filling station. There is a very big store there. The owner of the um, filling station, he used to pile his ginger, uh, ginger there. There are almost over 40 or 5, is it 500 bags of ginger in that very store. So I was told. So some of the youth, we don't know, is it from the, uh, those that are protesting? Or it is Miss Cream that have taken advantage of that, we cannot say. But they break the wall, enter the the, the, the store, uh, you know, loot some of the gingers, and they set it ablaze, and they vandalize the the filling station. So on their way coming back, after entering Kafanchan, some of them they attempted to enter Kafanchan, and that is where. The commotion started. The youth blocked them that they should not enter. So from Which youth specifically, youth from inside the town, they blocked them. That since they are following the main road, they, there is no any reason why they should enter the main town. I understood that the rally was planned for everybody, all the youth, irrespective of religion, tribe, and everything. What was this rally for? The rally was to register the grievances against uh, what was going on, the killings and everything in our area. That was what the rally was meant for, as I was told. I'm not part of the people that planned the rally, so I didn't know. But what I understood when it took place was that they wanted to lead a protest to the local government. It was going to be peaceful. And from pictures too, the police led them to the local government secretariat. Successfully, there was no problem. The police led them to the local government secretariat. Whatever transferred there, I cannot say because it's all hearsay. But they went to the local government successfully. Whether they achieved their aim or they didn't, I cannot say. Because, but I, I think from information, they, they, they didn't meet the chairman of the local government. He wasn't there. That it was on their way back that at the tail end of Ibadan Street struck the Emir, Emir Road, that those of them that backed out not to go for the rally started throwing stones at them. In the history of a peaceful rally in Nigeria, it has never been done successfully. And especially with the tense atmosphere. With the tense atmosphere, we felt it was not conducive for any peaceful rally to take place here in Kafanchan. And you can see where the rally started. It started from a neighboring local government, from Zangun Katab local government. Kasid is part of uh, Zangun Katab local government. The rally started from there. And in, in the first instance, it was not even supposed to have been done. Okay, on Monday, we are in our shop as being a people selling, preparing for Christmas celebration. We have bought goods ready, about to sell. Around 10, we saw some rally people doing rally with the leaves. When they pass out, because I'm buying and selling a new market, a market. Then I we saw them on the road with leaves. 
I said, where are they going? They said they're going to the local government. After going to the local government, they go there safely and went back. One day we're going back. Later on, in the later an, an hour, people begin to run. We are in the, in the inside town because Miyako Market is a bit out of town. So we are inside town that they are running. Then we, we, we are there. Then later on, we hear that this coffee has been pushed. Then all of us closed shop and went back to the shop. So we are, we are going to ask what happened. So on the process of the rally, when they are going back, the, the outside flying begin to stew them. So when they begin to stew them, that's why people, everybody run away. At the time, fear running for his life not to be harmed. This is a very serious allegation. It was unfounded. It never happened like that. But the people that started the peaceful demonstration, maybe they had, you know, an intention. So maybe going back, they have to perpetuate that their intention. That's why I said this question should be thrown back to them. However, one thing is sure. No one is ready to accept blame while the resident tribes trade these blames. What our youth were saying is that the Igbos participated, they saw them particip and participated in that very protest. That's one. And there is a mox that is attached to one house at Ogbomosho Street. That very place is dominated by Igbos. 99% of, the, of, the, of, 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 that, of, of those that are uh, living in that area are Igbos. It was the first most that was says a bless. And I think that was what triggered our youth to, 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 to start uh, 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 misbehaving. My brother, since I came down to this place, you would never even a day involved in any causing of any crisis in this town. But due to selfishness, self-centered and wickedness by our following Muslim brothers, any time they cause a problem, they have to loot our material, burn our houses. When the governor came, just one minute after he had passed was when the Hazard community destroyed the defilement station belonging to an, to an, to an, to an Igbo man. With the House of Fulanis, or Islam, or the Muslims per se, we have never, ever launched an attack against any community. You can verify, you can go around the community and ask. For some people, the crisis may be spiritually and economically related. The causes of all this crisis, almost every day, is lack of job opportunity. And uh, some of our boys are good in taking alcohol and smoking in their hand, taking sukudai, and what not they are not supposed to take. If they are busy, I want to believe God, if they are busy, they will not have time for such things. But hence, they don't have something doing. They go out to mingle with friends that cannot help them. That is what is causing our problem in this country. I, I do not agree with that. First and foremost, I would say that it is, we need to have a reorientation. Our religious leaders have not told us the truth. Our traditional leaders have not told us the truth until we begin to see ourselves first and foremost as being Nigerians before tribe, before religion, all that is happening will continue to happen. You understand what, what I'm trying to say? It doesn't matter whether this man is a house of any person. It doesn't matter whether this man is a Christian or a Muslim. But until we begin to see ourselves first as being Nigerians, why should Nigerians be killing themselves? That is the issue. In the recent crisis, which started on Monday, December 19, 2016, two lives have so far been lost, while properties worth millions of Naira destroyed. The very industrious Igbo people are found everywhere, even in Kafanchen. Some of them have plied their trade in this town for as long as 30 years. They lament their loss in this latest crisis. At number one Bebeji Street, I'm selling mattresses there. I'm representing a company called Good Foam. They supply me goods on credit. When they supply me, if I sell this goods finish, I will return their money, they supply me other ones. So on that Monday morning, when I came to the shop, after praying in the shop, then I later went some way. So along the road, I saw a group of youths that was doing rally. 
So I was surprised because they were calling all these green leaves. So I started asking, they said that they were protesting. So as a result of that, I just rushed back to my shop. Did they tell you what they were protesting for? Hmm? What were they protesting for? I, when I asked, they said that they were protesting about the attack on them by, by his men. That, that was the, what they were protesting. So because of that, I just rushed back to my shop. Because as time was like that, I said, it is better that me, I just rush back to my shop, to where I'm staying. So I reached there, within a while, people started running hotel skater. Because by that time, all my goods were outside, all your mattresses. So they started running everywhere, they started running hotel skater. Then I just managed to carry my, all those goods, rush them inside, with the assistance of my subordinate. So we just locked our, up our shop. All the shops were closed, people were just running, running home. Then I entered my bike and just left to reach my house. But then along the line, within a while, people started, they said that they started looting, 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 looting. What I just heard was the smoke. I just saw a smoke because my residence is not far from where my office is. I just saw a smoke. So people started saying that, is it not that shop? I said, I don't know. I don't know. So they said that I should go and check. I said, because there were, there were some security men. They were preventing us from crossing the mirror to go to that side. So I pleaded with them that let me go and confirm what was happening at that place. So they are permitted me. When I reached, when I reached there, everything was, was engulfed with fire. The firefighters were there trying to quench, the, quench the, 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 the fire, but it was uncontrollable. So everything was burnt, burnt all the whole mattresses upon the expensiveness. You know, the cost of production of mattress now is highly expensive. The cost of it is highly exorbitant. All of them just burnt down. The one, so it just burnt the whole building. So I was totally, I was, I was totally you know, aggrieved. I just left that scene and people started consoling me. So that was what I can say that. Like how much that. do you think you lost? Well, because both my documents and a lot of things were inside here. But from my, I may say from estimate, it may cost something like 4.5 4, 4, 4. million naira. We are in the shop when we notice that there is a lady. And the lady was peaceful because we noticed the accompanying of the police. With the, everybody was calm and everybody was busy doing the business. But at a time where they were coming back from the lady, we notice that uh, people start running heta skater. So we closed down and everybody left home to avoid being wounded or something like that. But to our greatest surprise, few minutes after that, they called me that they have dismantled my shop. They have boggled my shop. Everything we came, the, the the mobile men could not allow us to cross, but in front of the mobile men there, we are destroying our shops, rooting our shops, carrying our things. By the time we could enter, almost what is in the shop is over. I travel out of Kafanchan. I was at home. They called me that there is a problem in Kafanchan. And uh, my shop is involved that they are breaking my shop. I call a friend of mine that is a soldier. But before he could reach there, they have boggled the whole shop. After packing my goods, okay. they, I'm selling Semovita. I'm a distributor to Semovita, Golden Penny. After boggling the shop, they put the shop at place. My brother, we have lost many things. Every year, we went to various meetings, various banks to collect loan. If we collected that loan, managing, you will see a hurricane. We went and bought a matches of five naira, full of hundred naira. And I'm sure I'm Kafan Chan is no ordinary town. This deserted place was once the commercial capital of southern Kaduna, a town where the Yorubas, Hausas, Fulanis, Igbos, Edos, and Delta and other tribes converged in the 30s, 40s. 50s up to the 80s as it was a major railway town. Many of these Nigerians settled here with the natives. So who are the original natives of Kafanchan? Uh, Kafanchan has three chiefdoms. We cannot say that um, uh, actually the Fanswam are the ones laying claim to the Kavanchan town as it is. Mm. Whereas Kavanchan is, is has three chiefdoms. You have the Fansuam chiefdom, you have the Kaninko chiefdom, and you have the Emirate. 
which is the Emirate is principally constituted by the Hausa Fulani community. This was possible during the era of the uh, for former uh, uh, civilian governor Ahmed Makarfi, who is the present acting PDP national chairman now. Then the the house has came. The natives allowed them space to stay. As time went on, because the, the natives originally did not care about them um, uh, royalty, but the houses originally have royalty in their blood. So they constituted, they constituted a, a a a. An emirate. Damage done to this former commercial capital is enormous. Even churches and mosques have been touched or destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, you. Send them. The chairman of the caretaker committee of Jamaa local government area, Bege Katuka, also had his house torched, but he still speaks peace. Dialogue is the way forward. <laughs> I've been touched, which we know at the end of everything, we're going to ensure that uh, those that have been uh, affected, maybe when the has to do with the property, uh, to Secretary like Jackson, we'll see what we can do to assist them. For the Commissioner of Police in the state, Agiole Abe, despite the challenges of the police, it is doing its best to keep the peace in the town. We do not really pray for incidences like this to happen, but when they happen, the police response is the most important thing. And I can tell you that if not for the quick intervention of the police, certainly the issue would have escalated. And but we are doing our best. We have men on the ground in, the, in Kafanchan. And I, since Monday, I've been in Kafanchan myself. As a matter of fact, I was right at the scene on the day of the incident. And I tried to speak with the two parties. And uh, however, you know, miscrants normally take advantage of situations. But everything was brought under control within two hours. I have set up a 10 man investigating team headed by a Star Commission of Police in charge criminal investigation on this command. And as I'm talking to you, they're already on their way to Kafanchan. They are going to operate in Kafanchan until we bring to book those involved in the, even the initial uh, uh, problem that led to the uh, crisis. And uh, if there's any other one that's involved, we'll bring him to book. A 24-hour curfew has been imposed on the town. The streets are empty. Vehicular traffic is light. But for retired Colonel Kachim, a curfew not well enforced is useless. I'm talking from a purely military point of view. And as a professional soldier, because I was well trained. Starting from my professional field, if you lay an obstacle, whether it's a minefield, anti-tank, anti-personnel, whatever obstacle field, as a professional, if you lay an obstacle, whichever, whatever, you have to cover that obstacle with fire. You can't lay an obstacle, you can't lay a minefield. 
You can't make well, that is anti personnel or anti tank. And you don't cover it with fire because it's useless. Now, coming back to a curfew. Many of us use curfews, use military terms that they don't even understand. If you impose a curfew, you should be able to enforce the curfew. Otherwise, that curfew is useless. I'll say it anyway, and it's, it's, it's from my professional point of view. If you, enforce, if you impose a curfew, you should be able to enforce the curfew. Oh, so from 2011, when they will impose a curfew in my town, they have never enforced it. They impose a curfew and allow people to do whatever they like. It is obvious that life cannot continue like this for these residents of Kafanchan. A lot depends on government's ability to bring all parties to the negotiating table. But some say this government is not doing enough. And the present governor is not helping matters. He came into town, okay, he got wind of what happened. He, there are three chiefdoms here. He should have at least visited all of them. But well, he went just to the Emirates, came out, and, and he left. And he was saying they attacked him. This woman went to him to protest peacefully, to demand for answers to questions which he has not been answering. This thing couldn't have escalated to this point if he had brought securities to checkmate these things right from Ninte, Godo Godo, Gidanwaya, Posokori, um, uh, Kaguru, before it came down to this place. Government, they have to be proactive. Whenever somebody breaks the law, no matter who he is, no matter his religion and ethnic affiliation, he, that person must be arrested and prosecuted according to the law. They called me that the governor want to see the old home in, in the old home communities. Then I went there with one of my colleagues, Mr. Fani Ijoma, to go and explain our views to the governor. Reaching to Emir Palace, I wanted to enter the door, they refused. I told them that I'm the president of the Hebrew community, that they know that oh, they all spoil our but all, 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 all our things. They said that I know that I will not enter. If I want, let me go to Canada and petition them. I said, okay, I called my colleague, let's go. Once the security agents came, come out and told me, don't move. If you move, they are going to kill you. If you see how they scatter all the Holy Mere Palace, all the Holy Mere about more than 5,000 people, scattering people's motto. What I did, God so kind, there's a Mopo man I know. I went to him, he took me to the vehicle. I had him inside the vehicle together with Fanny Joma and one hygienist to escape us from the Mere Palace. Beyond the rhetorics, action is needed. The way forward of peace is for us to embarrass patience and tolerance. We have to be patient with each other. That is what our, bi uh, uh, our two books teaches us. We have to be patient, we have to be tolerant. But the natives want to live at peace with everybody. We, we can live at peace with everybody. We are never going to the town to attack them. Never. So, with the difference, or differences, Unless we can come together again and don't show that one is superior than the other, or one faith is better than the other, or that somebody is richer than the other, uh, the thing will continue. We have been doing that for the past four years. We have been doing that, calling people together, different tribes, uh, different religions, preach peace, and ask them to go and please practice peace in their various communities. If a certain group of people are fighting, assuming I'm fighting with an Igbo man or with a Baju man, it's, we are different personalities. If I meet any Baju man, there's no point for me to harass, castigate, and even go further to kill him. And there's no point for an Igbo man or Baju man or any other tribe, because I am fighting with an Igbo man or Kaji man to descend on any house man. From our investigations, it is obvious that this conflict will be unending if there is no dialogue, if all parties don't come to the table to talk. It is left for the government of Kaduna State to call all parties of this conflict to the table to resolve a conflict that may degenerate to an insurgence or probably a civil war.